two boxes that I'm advertising. And uh, I'll just show you, if you come around the other side of the car, Again, right. Here is the two boxes. Now the first box, I'll just, I'll just jump into the drive, into the driver seat. Now, right. The first box, the yellow box, called yellow because it's a yellow box, contains all the connectors that you'll ever need when the car is um, one of these pre-OBD connector 16-pin type cars. You'll probably never really need these, but, but you do have. And they're listed on the um, on the on the listing. But you've got uh, Mitsubishi, Mazda, Toyota, um, etc., etc. Um, you've also got the expensive Mercedes, which is a plug-in and powered-up um, connector. And you've got a selection of others. There's the BMW one and various others. So there's loads of connectors, as I say, which are listed. Now I'll just um, move that down here, out the way, and then I'll. This is the main box. It, you'll probably always use. If I open it up, there we go. And inside we have um, the main handheld computer, similar to the PDA, you know, the handheld computer. And also we have the Bluetooth transmitter. Now this diagon is a Bluetooth. It's a new innovation and it actually uses Bluetooth technology. This transmits to this. I'll show you in a second. In the box we've got other connectors, manual connections if you need to use manual connections. We've also got um this plugs in into the car, into the OBD connector of the car. In awkward positions where you can't get it in, you've got a sort of a connector like that as well. You've got a, a little cable. But today we're going to use um it's got the British 3-pin plug, by the way, and connectors for printers, the USB printer, which connects uh, a little bit into, into the little slot there, and then into the printer, that's printing. Um, right, if you just kind of uh, come in a little bit, all I need is these two items here. That's all I need, these two items. Now, this is a Renault uh, Megane Scenic, Scenic 2. So with the connector in this, it's just down here, so if you look, that's the connector, which you find at standard equipment on most vehicles after about uh, 97, 98. So this is what you'll be coming across. Now all I do, I connect this, I'll put this into here, like that. You'll then find the power and start flashing blue, which is typical blue for Bluetooth technology. Now it's transmitting data to this handheld computer. Now with this computer, I just um, I got a little stylus stick, touch screen, like that. Um, what I'm going to do is put the ignition on this car. I won't start. I won't start the engine for a moment. I'll just put the ignition on. Now you have to wait eight seconds on this particular model until you get a click. Okay. Now with this computer, I switch it on at the top. There you are. It takes a few moments. Comes up with. X431 Diagon. Now Diagon, by the way, while we're waiting, is um, part of the launch company. The launch diagnostics have been around for about 20 years. One of the biggest players in, in the world and the producers of, of garage equipment. Um, and they've won numerous awards which I've shown you on the, on the site there. Anyway, we come to the first screen. You might not be able to see it, but you either got a cable connection where you can just simply use the old-fashioned method of connecting via a cable from the box or we're going to use Bluetooth. And today we're going to use Bluetooth, so I'll just double click that, like a computer, comes up with the first screen showing all the different manufacturers. Now there's 12 listed on this page Renault, Peugeot, Suzuki, Land Rover, Fiat. Next page, another 12, that's 24, another page, third page, 36, final page, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45 manufacturers. Actually, it's 44 plus an OBD generic. Um, anyway, let's go back to, oops, went back to the beginning, but if I just simply start again, Renault, because we're in a Renault. Highlight that, press OK, comes up with a version, version 37.5. Now 37.5 for the Renault is the latest version, 2000 up to 2009. Alright, 
press OK, it's now analyzing the car via, remember this transmitter? It's transmitting data into it. OK, you just give it a few moments. Remember, you can use this from about uh, 30 meters, about 100 feet away. So you can actually go in your office or your house, kitchen, have a cup of tea while you're doing your uh, diagnostics. So it's much more civilized. But we're going to just sit in the car, OK? Now it comes up with a list, Twingo, Modis, Clio, Clio 2, blah, blah, blah. But this is a Scenic, so let's go next page, see if it's on the list. Ah, yes, Scenic. Scenic 2, that's what this is. Press Scenic 2. Then it comes up with all the all the various uh, options. Injection, air conditioning, automatic gearbox, ABS, airbags. So if you've got an airbag light on, you go to the airbag system because it will clear all these faults. But uh, let's, go to, um, let's go to injection. Injection. Now it's reading the data from the injection. And it comes up with uh, various um, information on codes and serial numbers. Let's go into it a bit in a bit deeper. And press OK. Now it's reading. It's got a situation where you've got computer identification, read fault code, clear fault code, read data streams and actuators. Let's um, read any fault codes. It's now seeing if there's any fault codes. It says no fault codes, so there weren't any fault codes to clear. Read data stream. Right. If I press in read data stream will come up with several pages of impact detected, computer um, after ignition, inlet air temperature, water temperature, rail pressure, many, many alternator flow, synchronization, immobil engine immobilizer, um, fan control one and fan control two, airflow damper, boost pressure, many. And let's just go to, um, here are, let's go to fuel flow correction for cylinder number three. Let's just check the fuel flow in cylinder number three. Right. Start the engine. Press that. Fuel flow uh, cylinder number three. I'm just checking what the parameters are at the moment, and you can check that with the factory what they should be. Press OK. It's now analysing it, and it comes up with um, the very the value and the units. Now you can also, and it's a forever changing value. It's showing uh, minus. Uh, 2.08, so, but it, you have to use this as a value from a reference point already known so, to check the fault line. But anyway, just giving this is just an example. It graphs it as well, so you have a graph uh, fuel flow correction for cylinder graph, and it's um, real time as it just goes through its. I'll just accelerate a little bit, increase the fuel. It's very difficult to see, but uh, it will graph graph that. Um, Going back, let's try and find something else. Um, inlet air temperature. Inlet air temperature at the moment. You know, a value of 51.6 Celsius. And it's, it's just an amazing amount of information. Page after page after page. Of, um, it's as good as the um, Snap-on. It's better, in fact, I think, than Snap-on. Um, for my opinion, it's easier to use. Um, let's have a look. Actuators. So you can actuate your EGR solenoids can be actuated. Rail pressure regulator, damper flaps, turbocharging solenoid can be actuated. So you can hear it clicks and see if the, the valves are working. Anyway, um, that's it really. Um, oh well, let's have a look at airbags. That's always something that always comes up an airbag warning light. So, here we are. I've just gone. Let's see if there's any. Um, Read fault codes. Ah, what a shame, there's no fault. Just when you need a fault, there's no fault. Alright. Anyway, I think uh, you get an idea of how it all works, but um, it's, it's very, very comprehensive. Okay, well, I'll just switch off. And um, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.